welcome to Local Kitchen where we showcase lovely fresh produce and hopefully give you some great recipe ideas. We're here at the beautiful Lincoln Castle which is steeped in history and in keeping with the nostalgic theme, later on we're going to showcase some wonderful old Lincolnshire dishes which you can still enjoy today. I'm going to be cooking potatoes with faggots and lardons, an old Mrs Beaton carrot recipe and a delicious honey, bramley apple and almond cake. I've been to some of the best farms in Lincolnshire and Nottinghamshire to get my ingredients. Martin, Chantenay carrots originally came from France. Yes, apparently. Uh, they were drifted across here in the sort of early 1900s. Uh, they were the mainstay of carrots in, 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 for the 50s and 60s and 70s, until the new variety of carrots came along, the Nantes type, which are the big long ones. Yes. And then we introduced back Chantenay carrots as, a, as an idea back in the late 90s, really, saying, you know, the marketplace wanted something more convenient and something which was actually sweeter and tasted slightly different. They are a really lovely little carrot, aren't they? Fantastic. The original Chantonnets are quite long. Are they? They are quite long, uh, but over the over the, the period of us developing the Chantonnet carrot, we decided we wanted something small and it could eat whole. Are the Chantonnets grown mainly in this area in the UK, or is it sort of in lots of different Pre places? Predomin predominantly, we developed the strains to work on Nottinghamshire sands. Yes. Wherever there's good, really good quality sands, yes. and we get good, really good producers, we, we'll work there. Is it true that the nutrients are, are, are actually better when the carrot's cooked? I think it's not so much better. What it is, is the nutrients are more stabilised, so they're more accessible for us to digest. There's also research out there that suggests if you actually eat them whole, that's more nutritious as well. Because actually, on the skin of a carrot, there's a lot of sugars and there's a lot of actually yeah. good enzymes which are really good for us. So basically, that's why the Chantonnet is so good, because we don't peel it. Exactly. Yeah. And it's actually, you know, you don't realise how much goodness there is in yeah. the skin. So are they actually easy to grow, Martin? Yes and no. They, they are easy to grow, but if you want to grow them to a really nice standard all year round, yeah. then they're very difficult to grow. There's a lifetime's worth of genetic work gone yeah. into actually making sure we've got something which is as good as you get from your own garden, really. Yeah. And that, that's what we want to do. And you've certainly done that. Yeah. I can't believe here at Fresh Grow that they produce 95% of all Chantonnet carrots in the UK. John, how many varieties of potatoes do you grow and how many varieties actually are there? Well, the total number of varieties available to grow in the UK is just over 220. Wow. So a huge number of different varieties that you can grow of all different shapes and sizes and colours. We only grow seven varieties here. Mm -hmm. um, some are for crisps, some for chips and some for the fresh market, so for, for baking and mashing and roasting. And, and how long's the season? I mean, when do you start planting them and when do you start harvesting them, really? Well, we'll start planting end of February, beginning of March, and continue to plant through until the middle of April, and that allows us to harvest from July with our earlier ones, mm -hmm. uh, which we can see behind us, um, through until October for the ones that go into store. There, there is a difference in each variety in the taste, isn't there? There's a huge difference of taste and texture more than anything. Uh, but it's fantastic to see such a great field of potatoes. What is this particular variety here? This variety, Saxon, um, will be... The, the potatoes are, are sort of just under tennis ball size okay. now. So another two, maybe three weeks and we'll be ready to harvest And these. you'll be irrigating, obviously, to put the weight on, will you? Absolutely, yes. going a long way in, John. We are. We need to find some really nice ones yeah. that have had lots and lots of irrigation. Oh, they've been watered here. You can see yeah. the soil's quite wet. It is. So what size would you sell them at, really? That's a good size, is it? Well, we'd like to get them to, to bakers. Bit, to so, bakers, really. Do so, these bake nicely? Yes, they do. So can I take some of these back? Yeah, take them with you.
Well, the next ingredient is honey, and I'm off to Croft Apiaries. So, Bob, how long have you been keeping bees for? So, I've been connected with bees all my life. My father kept bees, a beekeeping family. My grandfather yes. kept bees, so I've never known life without them, really. If I wanted to start keeping bees, or anyone else did, how do you go about it? Well, the best way I would uh, suggest is that you buy a good book and read the book over winter months and, yes. and, and make sure that you really want to get into it. But then is to go on a course and the local bee clubs run courses and they will sort of introduce you to beekeeping and the basics of beekeeping and then you take it from there. So how many will be in the hive then? In this particular hive here we're going to have sort of 60,000 ish. 60,000? Yeah, yeah, there's quite a few in there. Yeah. Uh, it's the height of the season, but of course that reduces back down to perhaps 15,000, maybe less in the winter months. So how many hives do you have all together, Bob? Well, we run for honey production about 70 or 80. So how many tonnes of honey per year do you actually produce? We try to produce between three and five tonne of honey. So do you process the honey here? Yeah, we do it all ourselves. You'd have come and have a look. Yeah, that's come great. To the So Bob, we've been down to see the hives. How do we get the honey from the hives to the jar? Well, what we do is when the frames come in, which are full of honey and they're all capped, yeah. and what we do is we put them into this uncapping machine. What is, what, when you say capped, what do you mean? Well, when the bees fill the cells up with the honey, yes. they seal it in, and we just slide that into there, yes. and it comes back out and it's uncapped. And from there, we transfer the frame across into here, and, the, the, the combs will then drip and once that's finished we then take out the empty frames from there and we'll put the the new ones full of honey into there it, that just spins round so that works on centrifugal centrifugal yeah and the honey comes out of the spinning machine and we we put it into here and it settles for 24 perhaps 36 hours longer if possible and in that time any debris bits of pollen bits of wax will float to the top and then once that's happened, we can then run the honey out of the taps from the bottom into buckets and it goes into storage. Some of the products that we do uh, make with our honey are, uh, we do a fudge, we've got granola. I see you've also got some nice things for your hands and... Yep, yeah, we've got a hand cream which is made from honey and beeswax if you want to try some. Quite frankly, this is a fantastic range of what, you know, is amazing honey. But you must take some for your recipe. And thank you ever so much for a wonderful day. That's no problem. Cheers. Lincolnshire is known as the food basket of the UK. Our link with food goes back for generations and here to tell us more about some of the traditional old Lincolnshire dishes is food expert Eric Phipps. Well Eric, you've got a wonderful selection of traditional Lincolnshire dishes, so so where are we going to start, do you think? Well, perhaps the most, or well, the unique product is uh, Lincolnshire stuffed chine. I mean, you don't find it anywhere else in the world. There's a related product in France called Jambon Percy, which is a combination of cured pork and parsley but in a totally different form. Explaining to people which cut well, is that? Well normally um, uh, this is the full backbone and it would be yes. sawn down the middle and then they, these would be pork chops. So I have to have a taste of it yeah. if that's all right? Yes yeah, sure okay. Mm. You can see we're getting pink and green stripes here. So good isn't it? Cured pork as bacon and then the green parsley. Mm. So we move on. Yeah, and this is a Lincolnshire hazelnut. Uh, Lincolnshire sausage meat. Sausages were famous because uh, they contained a lot of meat, a few breadcrumbs, and then the seasoning was sage. And you filled your sausages, but at the end of filling, you always were left with a lump of, of uh, sausage meat. And uh, this was wrapped in, the in cowl, coal fat, it, yeah. and then it was a, a cold dish. So what have we got here? What secret device well, we got in there? Here's a, a pig's fry. It's a casserole of uh, diced pork oh. and all the offal, liver, kidney, heart, sweetbreads, <gasps> uh, little bits of the second lard and even, even some brain. Now, I haven't asked, but who, who did the chine actually? The chine and the hayslet are supplied by Jim Sutcliffe of Meridian Meats at Louth. Now, plum bread, 
Now, I think I know who plum bread that is. To me, it looks like it's Myers. It is indeed, yes. Was plum bread made because they had lots of spare lard originally? That, that would be, you know, if you know, if you had lard, you would use that to make your bread in general. And then on special occasions, yes. birthdays, treats, yes. or Christmas, then uh, dried fruits, fine fruits be added, mixed peel, and then baked. So the final Lincolnshire tradition is? A curd tart. A curd tart. Most farms had at least one cow, and they would produce milk, cream, and butter. And yeah. byproduct of butter making was butter milk. If you added that back to milk, then it would curdle the milk proteins, yes. and you would end up with a with a curd cheese. And oh, then uh, put it in the short crust pastry case and bake it, and that's another tea time treat. Thank you, Eric, ever so much for showing us some of Lincolnshire's food heritage. Yeah. For more details about all these lovely traditional dishes, just go to our website, localkitchen.tv. I'll be back after the break to cook some more very traditional recipes. See you in a few minutes. Thank you.